Uh, my family comes from uh, Varanasi, from the ghats of the Ganges, where I actually grew up in a boarding school in Dehradun called Wellams, so I'm really from Wellams. Um, I studied in Delhi. I did my post. Uh, I did my graduation BCom honors and did a post grad in mass communication. And then from there directly I came to Bombay and I was very lucky to have a job with Mr. Mahesh Bhatt on day one itself. So I was his assistant for some time and I really learned uh, you know, a few things there. And then thereafter I actually really did train myself a little bit uh, while I was in the industry for writing and then you know, the career of writing began. What attracted you to mass form? Uh, interesting question. Uh, I think firstly rebellion because it was the you know not the most done thing in my time. So everybody was either studying for IAS or an MBA. I just wanted to do something different, and that was the upcoming uh, you know industry. And not too many people knew about it. I just thought it was very exciting to you know to be able to uh, do something that went that far and wide. Then in Bombay, any anything in your childhood which prompted you towards writing? Uh, yes, actually, I mean, I, in that sense, I have been writing since I was in class one, that would make it, what, four or five years old. So I've always been writing per se, more poetry, later prose, uh, or always lived in a slightly fanciful world, had imaginary friends, largely dogs, and wrote about them, wrote to them. So yes, in that sense, the creative was always a part of what I did, uh, you know, like, for example, was the editor of a school magazine. Uh, wrote a lot of plays and things like that in college. So yes, in that sense, uh, writing was a part. Uh, but just professionally and formally, I didn't really know that or think at that point that I was going to make it a profession. So that really did happen to me uh, a lot later and uh, just organically, I guess. Cinema, you know, again, it's always a slightly longer answer I have to give on this because I think I was uh, almost uh, born for, born with and grew up with cinema. Uh, you know, I, I used to live in a small town called Gorakhpur in UP where the only entertainment was cinema. And my parents were film freaks and they still are. I used to watch, uh, you know, one film every night and two on Sundays. And so from the age of six months, I believe I was taken to the cinemas and I was very riveted by uh, the moving picture. And uh, it's an anecdote that I sometimes share is that, you know, I was such a filmy child and so not interested in studies that the only way my mother got me to uh, study was that she got a film fair and she taught me as A for Amitabh uncle, B for Bobby, C for Chinto uncle, D for Dumbo uncle, etc. So then, you know, I think ironically that was uh, the sort of foundation of my education. So where else would I go? Uh, this is a Jamia Milia Islamia. There is uh, something called MCRC, Mass Communication Research Center. It is in fact Asia's uh, premier institute for mass comm because the only one which offers a degree. It's an MA in mass comm. Uh, so that, that's really, you know, a uh, very rare and sort of a very all-round kind of institute. So uh, the focus was on various things like traditional entertainment, which was street theatre or radio or even, uh, you know, media appreciation where you learn to critique a film. So unfortunately, writing per se was never a course out there. It just became part of filmmaking, which was really just one of the courses there. Uh, and so uh, while I majored in direction, which is the last uh, thing that you learn in your second year. It just uh, sort of insidiously was part of the whole thing, but no, there was no formal education in uh, writing then. What attracted you to mass form? Uh, interesting question. Uh, I think firstly rebellion because it was the, you know, not the most done thing in my time. So everybody was either studying for IAS or an MBA. I just wanted to do something different. And that was the upcoming, uh, you know, industry and not too many people knew about it. I just thought it was very exciting to, you know, to be able to uh, do something that went that far and wide. And then from there directly I came to Bombay and I was very lucky to have a job with Mr. Mahesh Bhatt on day one itself. Uh, actually, I, I already had a few friends who were working with Plus Channel, uh, which was headed by Mr. Amit Khanna then which was already a place uh, where you know they were always looking out for and encouraging uh, raw and fresh talent so i just happened to call up and uh, was you know just luckily got through to amit khanna instantly and he called me for an interview that evening and i just you know walked into the room where there was mr bhat and i still remember i just peeped in and he asked me to come in and he said the only question he asked me was that are you good 
and uh, cocky me just said no i'm brilliant and he said that's great you're on and that's that that was the beginning of my job and i was just really stunned because i was like that's it and he was like that's it and then uh, you know i didn't even stop there because i my next question was how much money am i going to get paid and he just laughed and said come back tomorrow and you'll know so that's really how it happened it just you know i came with uh, no ideas and i had no idea about bombay whatsoever so there were no uh, expectations there were no apprehensions it was just you know out there blank page and i just gave it a shot and it happened so i was his assistant for some time and i really learned uh, you know a few things there and then there after i actually really did train myself a little bit uh, while i was in the industry for writing and then you know the career of writing began uh, so immediately after mr mahesh pat i joined uh, mr anupam kher's uh, tv company as a creative director and i just started off as a writer director myself and uh, i directed uh, wrote and directed about five shows for television and i was creative head on about nine other shows that we had uh, including events like you know all the award shows um, screen awards film fair etc etc so um, so there was all you know one just plunged into the big bad ocean without uh, again thinking too much about it so in a sense i learned on the job and uh, thereafter uh, you know i switched careers just slightly by actually heading a few companies so i was heading channel v after that was programming head uh then i was the head of a website company and then uh, last um, you know sort of corporate job of mine was the the international creative director of crest communication and all of this was in the first 4 5 years of my career so in that sense i grew up uh, professionally really fast at some point uh but somewhere ra- uh, around let's i think it was 2001 or 2002 I just felt that this wasn't the route I wanted to follow because I, you know it's really pure creatives that uh, pull me and that's what I've come for. So I switched tracks again. So I just overnight left my job. Uh, was jobless for about six months uh, and a little more. And then writing came along as a more full time profession uh, a little later. Uh, meanwhile, actually, I'd already been part of a few scripts. I uh, wrote a film called Rahul for Mr. Prakash Jha. I was part of a cult film called Yaadi by Mr. Subhash Khari, and I was also part of a film called Supari by Mr. Padam Kumar. So I'd already done that while I was doing my jobs, and then, like I said, I quit and I was jobless for a while. I tried making my own film at that point, but it was difficult to raise finance, etc. And then somewhere along the way, around 2004, I started writing full time, and it started with television first, and then switched back to films again. written about 17 shows uh, i don't remember all of them but some of the be- well known ones would be jassi jassi koi nahi i wrote a part of you know the second uh, phase of it uh, there was a show called jab lab hua for zee tv uh, there was something called uh, shararat on star plus uh, which was a children show also did something called dhoom machao dhoom for disney which was also a children show so uh, like that i basically did a lot of children a lot of youth and basically alternate stuff on tv which wasn't the mainstream uh, the family format again just like everything else in my life coincidentally i was i had finished writing uh, this show for disney called dhoom machao dhoom and i was on a sabbatical and i just decided that i've done a lot of television and i just wanted to take a break and i just breezed into a barista uh, at oshiwara one fine day and i met my old friend mr ram meet chandani who was at utv that time and who just looked at me and said hey why don't you come and write fashion so i was like i thought it's only written and he said no and you know they spent about 9 months but the script is not there so that's the way next day i met mr madhur bandarkar and the rest is history Well, I'm really blessed to be part of so many films that have been the female protagonist, and very radical ones at that. And also, uh, just lucky to be the only woman on the team, and therefore having the maximum, you know, sort of hold on those stories. Uh, when it came to fashion, uh, we were still trailblazers in that because I remember having many screaming matches about the graph that the character of Priyanka Chopra went through. uh there was that very dramatic scene uh, where she wakes up with you know a stranger in a hotel who just happened to be a black person and um i remember having a lot of arguments on that but my whole point being that you know who can think of a woman's mind better than a woman 
so really i you know i sort of stake claim on that and say that you know the intricacies the dark spaces that only a woman can go uh, you know to uh, for a woman protagonist so in that sense yes i think uh, i end up being a bit of a torch bearer on the psyche of the woman in the films that i've been part of yes i th i think it's extremely exciting to write of women protagonists today uh like i was telling earlier in fashion of course we were not conscious of the fact that it was going to be trailblazing and you know create a new sort of uh template uh in in many ways but we just went ahead because you see for me uh, uh priyanka in fashion was not an unknown entity that's that's a girl i know these are girls around me these are you know perhaps some of my friends or just as people so that's a today's girl so i thought that it was extremely important to bring out today's girl on screen which of course unfortunately a man will always you know put a girl he thinks he knows on screen as opposed to a woman who knows you know other women around so i think that spot became fashion's victory and that's what became a template because it got accepted uh yes it was it did pretty well for itself it was at that point the highest grossing uh, heroine oriented film ever and i think thereafter i i do believe it charted the way for something like say the dirty picture which was of course an extremely well made film a different character but the fact is that you accept a grave woman today who is not a vamp you know who has her fallacies who can fall and yet redeem herself i think that's the template that fashion you know sort of came up with and then when i see a film like cocktail where i think deepika padukone has done a brilliant job and then of course there's going to be heroine and there's several others that are coming up i think the the grey the more human and today's heroine is finally on screen and i think it's extremely exciting to write more and more about her because there are so many facets to her still unexplored my latest film is called heroine which is about to release on the 21st of september 2012 uh where do i even begin telling you about it from because uh, heroine has been a very uh, interesting entertaining exhausting journey we started writing it in 2010 april uh where uh, you know it really was uh, in a slightly different zone it was meant for karina kapoor then as uh, somewhere along the way uh, she had some date issues and you know things went to cold storage uh we went on to uh, ishwarya rai bachchan and we rewrote the script for her entirely because this was uh, you know an actress who was almost a decade older and uh, you know and then well everybody knows what happened and uh, the film stalled and then there was again a chance that the film was not going to happen at all but somewhere we all felt so passionately for the story and the script that we said no we must get it made and then lo and behold karina kapoor comes back to the film and we rewrote it a third time to suit her but i must say that in in all of this uh, it has evolved into a much stronger much more complex much more layered uh, script than any of the things that we written for mother itself for you and it is really hope it's going to be good film well heroine like most other madhur films uh, always start with an idea that you know takes hold of him uh, it's always a one line idea but uh, you know i i find it very fascinating that he has really all the right ideas because he just you know uh, he gets fascinated by a certain subject and he has a take on which part of the subject he wants to explore So when it came to heroine post, uh, you know, he made a film called Dil to Bachcha Ji, which was a very light film and different from his stuff. Uh, he came back to his forte, which is the heroine-oriented, uh, you know, uh, territory, and he mentioned heroine. And I remember meeting him one on one. I was the solo writer at that point, and I just asked him that which part of this excites you. And uh, what he told me, which intrigued me uh, no end, was that he was very interested in the last few years of an Indian heroine's career. because it is uh, it's it's a very interesting point because you are right at the top but you're almost seeing an invisible precipice that is about to come up uh when it comes to heroine um, it's just steps ahead of whatever we did in fashion and whatever else that I've been working on uh because heroine for starters is unlike madhur's other films is not an outsider who enters you know a system and through whose eyes we see a system it's a far more personal journey it is in the exploration of the film industry like his other stuff uh, it is the story of an insider already and and once she's an insider and once she's already there to make her an underdog of any kind to have any sympathy for her became a biggest challenge uh to to retain all the you know the various shades to her character grays blacks whites whatever and still make her human 
I think that was the biggest challenge. So my first thought while writing Heroine, which is, you know, I told Mother as well, is that we must write it inside out. So see, that again became a slightly personal space for me because the inside core only I as a woman would have, you know, been able to enter and understand. So we went, the entire film was first written as an emotional graph of Mahi uh, played by Karina Kapoor. Uh, and, and then we got into the externals of that character. So at any given time, we are actually playing with her in a, you know, with her state of mind, which I do believe is quite new and it's not something that we've seen too much in our cinema just yet. So yeah, I'm hoping that that's what works for it, that's what is unique about it and that's what gives it some special layers. Yes, like I mentioned earlier, I went into a self-training on writing because after I had uh, written and directed my shows, uh, which were extremely radical, very experimental and I was just actually surprised in retrospect that they got made at all. I also felt uh, personally as a storyteller that I was becoming a very niche storyteller. I had uh, no way of reaching out to larger masses and I didn't really know how to emotionally connect which I remember Mr. Mahesh was always telling me that that was my forte and I wasn't quite using it. So I felt lost for a while and then when I went on the net I discovered that there were a lot of professional courses uh, that any person could do to actually learn writing and the fact is that there is a science to it which honestly till then was lost to me. So the first thing that really leapt out at me from a bookshelf was the book called Story by Mr. Robert McKee and I think that just changed my life because that, that till today is the bible that I follow, the science of script writing. Uh, once I uh, studied and read story, it just, you know, the whole universe opened up to me and everything made so much sense. And I started watching a lot more movies, which is really the best way to learn, you know, cinema by just watching more cinema. So as story explained cinema better to me uh, and having already done some work, the collective experience uh, made more sense. And then I found many other books, you know, lots of them which were with interviews of writers, uh, a bit of Sid Field, which I thought was a little irrelevant by then. And uh, just that, just watching more films, analyzing them and, you know, working on them on my own. So it was self-training for at least two and a half years before I felt that I think now I know a lot more than I did before. Plot, plot structure, plot point, second half, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Do you follow all this? Uh, yes, Mazayas, up to some extent I do because like I said, I you know was self-trained finally in the science of writing. Yes, I believe that there is something called uh, you know the science which one has studied but more than that, I think it all comes from the dramaturgy that the Greeks discovered so many thousands of years ago. So once they have figured the graph where at each point the human mind and the human heart is going to react to something in a particular way, who might even question that? I think it's very well established. So yes, I do, but really not doggedly. Uh, I'm really not a person who gets very involved with structure. I, to me, structure comes in stage two. So for me, I have to write out the entire screenplay and then start looking at its flaws and see where it's not working and start applying structure. Then I would definitely get into plot points and say, okay, that's why this is not working. And then by third draft, you kind of amalgamate your, you know, the esoteric self and the structure self and something. And then the magic kicks in really. So yes, I'm aware, but really not over caught up with it. Yes, I think so. I'm very sure of it. Uh, but I, personally, I'm a huge fan of the non-linear structure. I'm a huge fan of structural uh, experiments in storytelling because I think that is where, uh, that is what is unique to cinema. Because, uh, you know, you don't do that in a radio play. You can do that in a book, but somehow it's not as effective. Because I think the mental involvement with the visual medium uh, on film is, is just so unique, uh, you know, not found anywhere else. So yes, I think non-linear films, like I said, hugely inspire me. Uh, of course, I really think that they have to be written like that because otherwise they just lose the plot. If you try doing it on the editing table, it'll show. It'll confuse you, it looks contrived and it completely loses the emotion. So unless you've not written it as cleverly as it's going to be on cinema, please don't do it. Uh, my forte is really story and screenplay. I'm not so much of a dialogue writer simply because I think I still, I, I mean I think in English. So for me the expression of English dialogue is much easier. For Hindi, it's a, always a bit of a struggle not because my Hindi is bad, but it's just that in Hindi, 
मेरे हिसाब से एक स्पेशल कला है एंड डायलॉग इट्स सेल्फ आई थिंक पर्टिकुलरली इन आर कंट्री इज अ स्पेशल स्किल एंड सो आई वुड यू नो रियली स्टिक टू स्टोरी एंड स्ट्री प्लेयर रॉट मोर एंड दैट्स वेर आई थिंक आई शाइन मच बेटर आई थिंक स्टोरी इज कम टू यू फ्रॉम द ईथो the one way i say all stories uh, are original or other stories can be original is when your entire uh, gamut of experience churns into something and there is that extra you know sort of i would say an x factor that comes into it and one fine day through this broadband of creativity in you it just downloads into you as a story and then you know it's an idea that takes hold of you and it grows and you stay with it and so you start realizing where and which part of your life it's coming from and then so you know you stay with that you stay with that part of your life where it's coming from and eventually it becomes just a story and a script by itself outside of your own experience it has a life of its own so i think every writer has his or her own style of writing uh, a lot of it is very uh, esoteric is emotional it's just something that brews within you so i would like to share a bit of my style uh every time i have an idea i first just live with it for a while you know i just stay with it i go for walks with it i play with it i talk to it and at some point when i feel that it's a little more there and it's a, you know i'm a little more pregnant with that idea i start writing um, what i call freestyle essays which is that you just write you just pick up and that that's a pen and paper process i always believe that so i just start writing whatever comes to my mind about it and through that uh, and without fail i mean it has never not happened that i always find the core and the heart of the story in that freestyle essay because it comes somewhere from the unconscious uh, once i've uh, centered it in a certain theme or a certain core then i know the space of the story then then what i call the pitch has been decided and somewhere its universe starts forming itself uh, from there on i work a lot more uh, i'm talking really story right now i'm not even going to screen play just yet uh, so with the story i live with the then as i working on the outline uh when it be- starts becoming a plot which is with the beginning middle and end i work on characters a lot so i first uh, while the outline is still forming i work on the character the protagonist and characters in general because somewhere they start defining the story so once character and plot and therefore structure has been defined i can then write uh start writing the broad sto- the entire story which invariably is about 20 pages long so once i've written the entire thing out then that's what i would call a story being ready um the next stage would of course be the screenplay i i always take a long break from the story because again you have to live with it you have to uh you know refresh yourself and i also like to watch a lot of films in that genre or in that mood before i get to the screenplay obviously not for inspiration of the wrong kind but because i think your mind needs to get tuned to that emotion and that idea and just be in that state and then starts the screenplay uh i was also explain that when it comes to uh, working with mr madhur bandarkar over fashion jail and heroin it is uh, the screenplay particularly is a bit of a collective exercise where we actually think of things at home and we you know we used to come and meet as a team and throw the ideas around and then the scenes form and then i would go back home and form it into a fully coherent screenplay with all its nuances and all filling in all the gaps uh that process of course repeats itself many many times whether you're working on your own or in a collective uh, across 3 months across 4 months i would personally say that in the bollywood situation a good script should really uh, be formed over at least 6 months and once that is done that's when you know the dialogues happen in your last draft and then the film begins of course even while it's being filmed there could be several changes that obviously as a writer one is part of and one suggests and then that's it lo and behold the film is ready and you watch it like a new product each time uh i always get my characters from real life because uh, i just always believe that you know truth is stranger than fiction uh i think that as filmmakers and particularly as storytellers uh we are really just observant people who you know have lived a lot of uh i think exciting life we have enough color in our own lives and i think we're just mentally trained or brought up to uh you know just notice a lot more around so therefore for me every character from some is always from somebody that i have either observed or sometimes even heard of 
until I have not seen the character in my head, I cannot go further. I have to really feel and know the person on paper to, you know, really be able to tell a story. I think story and storytelling is so closely related to life and to living. Because unless you've not lived something, unless you don't have a perspective on things, unless you don't, uh, you know, feel somehow passionately involved with society or even politics for that matter, how are you going to have a voice? You know, so I think that's what's really happening, at least I speak for my generation, is that, uh, you know, my generation of storytellers, filmmakers mostly come from outside, we're not a film family, we spent many years struggling in a different way, nobody slept on, you know, bus stops or eat vada pav, but our struggle was of a much more mental and, uh, you know, the struggle was of your voice being heard and not sounding too radical and uh, basically not threatening the existing establishment. So I think the rediscovery is actually the rediscovery of our own selves because uh, we've spent and I think uh, just invested a lot of ourselves in this whole process. So when you rediscover yourself, uh, when you rediscover your own uh, you know, passion for life and your involvement with society and the world in general, you will rediscover story. I think that's what's happening to us. You see, filmmakers are not people who are outside of society. I mean, you know, we're not bureaucrats or we're not uh, ministers who have been elected from somewhere. We're just people who also watch other people's films, you know, and just want to tell a different story from every other film that we've seen. So yes, if we are changing, which means obviously we're part of the society that's changing. And I think what's uh, very interesting and uh, very good today is that there is no just broad mass out there. I think there's a majority which definitely enjoys a certain kind of, you know, cinema. Uh, I would even stick my neck out to say that our national IQ from 9 has come to probably 15 and is even going towards 18. And then there is another set of audience which is, you know, at IQ 23 or 35 or then 45 as well. And I think there's cinema for everybody. Of course, the, the bars and the strata are thinner as we go up. But if you can make your film viable, you've got the audience. How do you differ uh, television writing from film writing? But if, according to me, television and cinema in our country are two different universes. Uh, I don't think that's how it is meant to be worldwide because when I see uh, a lot of television, especially from America, but I think their, their television is much better than their cinema right now. I see very solid writing. I see uh, very complex and very competent writing. Unfortunately, in television, but perhaps that's how it's meant to be because television is the more mass medium today. It goes into households, it, it cuts across the country, it's a pan-Indian medium. In which case, one will have to cater to a lower, the LCD, the lowest common denominator. In which case, when you're writing for television, uh, two things, the craft itself is a little different because, uh, you know, you're writing episodic and you're writing across, you know, five days a week and across so many weeks and months. Uh, the other, uh, I'm not sure that's entirely true, but the television channel personnel totally believe that it must be a lot slower, a lot more spelt out, and hence a lot louder. I'm not necessarily in agreement of it, because I think uh, if you change bits of that, I think it would still work, because it's the same audience which does watch some cinema. So. Uh, I think writers today in 2012 decidedly have it much better than they had, let's say, even four or five years ago. I think everybody collectively, including the audience, has woken up to the fact that there is something called a script and that somehow a script is the most, you know, all-important factor in telling you a good story. And therefore, a writer is so intrinsic and so, so important to the filmmaking process. And once everybody is realizing that, the importance itself is sort of growing as we speak. Unfortunately, and I have no problems in stating this uh, right here, is that even now I would say that I think we are not given enough credit. Uh, we're definitely not faces of the film like everybody else is and considering we are the original authors of the story I mean we are the people who put it from a blank page and you know we are the people who put a blueprint together for everybody else to run with I think there is a certain stage uh, where because we're not needed in production you are forgotten and you almost have to raise your voice each time to say excuse me you know I exist and you know I happen to do what I did for the film uh, but I think, yeah, it would definitely change as we get along. I think the next generation of writers would definitely have it better than we do. No, I think the era of Salim Javed is totally over. I think it was, uh, I mean, there was never Salim Javed before them. 
and I don't see one after them. It's been what almost 30 years now. It's uh, I don't think that's possible because I think it was the amalgamation of all kinds of things that must have happened at that time, where you know they managed to create characters that worked for a star who then became such a big industry by himself. I don't quite see that happening today because I think the probably also I think the situation and the system is a lot more democratic in a lot of ways. So I also don't see it being credited to one set of people, least of all the writer. I think right now perhaps a star, ironically, Selim Saab's son Salman himself, who I think holds that space today. But other than that, no. As a writer, it's the tightrope balance because no matter what we say or what we feel, it is a business at the end of the day. And it will be very silly and stupid to be all idealistic and say, I don't care, I'm just going to write a story and, you know, I don't really care what happens to it later. I think what happens as you, uh, you know, grow along and as you evolve, there is a certain dual sort of evolution that happens in you. So you understand commercial viability and the struggle is to retain your idealism, which I think we've managed fairly well so far. So what you do is you manage to train your mind in a way that you think of something which is very passionate, you think of something which is the right thing to say and the right thing to do, but now you've learned the craft enough to know that this will work. And when I say this will work, it will work first effectively to the audience and hence the commercial viability. Of course, the actual commercial viability can only be decided by the director and the producer, which is so dependent on the star uh, to be you know, starring in the film, which is not entirely in, in the writer's hands. But so therefore, what I mean is that the effectiveness and how much people understand and relate to, that's the commercial viability that a writer is most aware and conscious of and should be. Does a film writer need to be socially conscious? Yes, uh, I would say that extremely strongly. Uh, perhaps it comes from the social relevance of Jamia that you know one studied or perhaps it's the upbringing. I, let me put this in a different way. I go beyond social consciousness. For me, as a storyteller, I believe that stories are healing. I believe that stories are meant to reach out to people, to make them feel, uh, to make them feel better in some way, and to in some way touch their lives and give them something to hold on to after they've left the film. And I think a writer without that is really doing half of his or, his or her job. And so yes, idealism is just intrinsically part of that. If you're not, if you're not looking at the higher values of life, why are you even bothering to tell a story? My uh, message to all new writers is that please first learn the craft. Please don't think that it's just like swimming that you just jump into the ocean and just you know beat your hands around and something will emerge. Uh, please don't think that just by being radical and irreverent and just you know putting five abuses you're going to make a kick-ass script, you're not. So somewhere have the humility to learn the craft, uh, respect story, respect storytelling and be if not original, uh, you know I'm okay if you really have other sources that you're getting your stories from, at least be emotional, at least be uh, honest. I think honesty is the biggest hallmark of storytelling, uh, way more than even original is. So I would request all the young writers to at least follow that. Uh, my plans for the future are like most writers in Hindi cinema is to direct my own films because that's the only way I think there will be a purity of my uh, emotion and vision uh, that should translate uh, onto the audiences. I am currently writing my own scripts, uh, which I'm hoping to uh, be able to take off the ground sometime next year. Till then, I am still quite happy and willing to write uh, for other people. I'm currently writing some young and new directors, and I think that is keeping me quite involved, excited, and refreshing me. I think to work with youth is becoming young again yourself.